The Joker is Batman's arch nemesis, and the two have been fighting since the very first Batman comic all those years ago. Now, usually Batman gets the better of the Joker, but on occasion, the Joker has not only gotten the upper hand, but has actually ended the Dark Knight's life altogether. Now, with this being comic book characters, he rarely stays dead for long. But even still, this video is going to go over every time that the Joker has killed Batman. Batman the Brave and the Bold In this version of the future, the Joker has died in battle with Batman, and Bruce Wayne later retires. He passes the mantle of Batman onto Dick Grayson and marries Selina Kyle, and the two of them have a son named Damien. Then years later after this, the son has grown up slightly, and the son of the Joker comes and attacks them at the Batman Museum. And both Selina and Bruce Wayne die. No! And it turns out that the Joker is still alive, and he sent his supposed son there to kill Bruce Wayne in revenge having worked out that he is Batman, or rather, was Batman. Of course, this tragedy forces Damian Wayne to accept his destiny, and he takes on the mantle of the Robin so that he can take down the Joker, and then in the future still, he eventually becomes the next Batman. Whatever happened to the Cape Crusader? Now in this story, Batman is dead, and all of his enemies, and a few allies, meet in a dingy bar in Gotham, and each one of them tells the story of how they killed Batman. Catwoman, the Riddler, one of the Robins, even Alfred, all tell versions of how they killed him. And of course, the Joker has a version as well. And in the Joker's version of events, he wants Batman to smile and laugh. But he won't, because he's Batman. So he injects him with the Joker toxin, but still he remains stoic. And so the Joker keeps injecting him with more and more to make him smile, until eventually he ODs and Batman dies. Without him laughing once, or so much as smiling which ironically really depresses the Joker, as he has no one to play with anymore, and he didn't even get Batman to laugh. And this is actually one of the more interesting comic stories of Batman, especially Alfred's take on how he killed Batman. And it's a story that really needs to get an animated film, with each version of how these characters killed Batman being directed by a different director. It could actually be a very interesting film, and I'm really surprised it hasn't happened yet. Emperor Joker in this comic story, starting in Superman issue 770, the Joker gets Mixia Spidalik's powers and he rules the universe as the ultimate god. And his revenge on Batman is to kill all of the Robins and then kill Batman and resurrect him each day, only to have him tortured and killed again and again in more and more horrific ways, including being eaten alive by vultures. Now, of course, the Joker was eventually defeated and lost these powers and everything was returned to normal though Batman was brutally scarred by having the memories of all the times that he was viciously killed stuck in his head. But thankfully, these memories were removed and he returned to normal. And this story was adapted into the TV series Batman the Brave and the Bold, in which the Joker gets the same powers and remakes the world in his own image. And again, he kills Batman, this time in a montage of brutality, resurrecting and killing him over and over again. Though again, he of course lost these powers, as Batman was able to make him realise that he didn't actually want them, as it wouldn't actually be any fun for him in the long run, and so the Joker gives the powers up. Though in this version, Batman seems to remember all the times that he was brutally murdered. But then again in this version, Batman is so tough that he just gets on with it. Endgame in this comic arc, the Joker has acquired healing powers that essentially make him immortal, as he's able to heal from any injury. Even when he is shot and killed, he does fall down, but his body just heals itself and brings him back to life. And in the final confrontation with the Joker, Batman has worked out that this healing power is because of a rare compound called Dionysium, which is in the caves under Gotham City. And so Batman and the Joker have a showdown in these caves, and Batman is able to neutralise the Dionysium in the Joker's system so that he can't heal. But both he and the Joker are severely wounded, and end up getting buried alive as the caves collapse around them. Of course, they both eventually return and are healed from their deaths and injuries, presumably by the pits of Dionysium that are under Gotham City, but the Joker still essentially kills Batman, even if he is resurrected. Who killed Batman? In this comic arc, starting in the 1940 Batman series, issue 291, Batman is dead, but no one knows who has killed him. So the supervillains of Gotham put on a trial, and each villain gives testimony and tells the story of how they killed him. Also, they can work out which one of them actually did kill him, and who's just saying they did in order to get street cred. 
And of course, one of the villains is the Joker. And his way of killing Batman isn't actually that great, to be honest. He hits him in the face with acid and then beats him in a fight, accidentally injecting him with a fatal toxin from his ring and killing him. He then pours more acid on the face of the body so the police can't identify who Batman was. Though, of course, it wasn't the real Batman, but just someone who dresses up as Batman in the hopes of one day replacing him when Batman dies. And it's revealed that the whole trial was actually just an elaborate ruse by Batman to work out who killed the man who was dressed as him. This is from the old era of comics where this kind of campiness was more acceptable, so you can forgive it. Going Sane This story takes place from Legends of the Dark Knight, issue 65 to 85. And in it, the Joker finally kills Batman by blowing him up with dynamite and then dumping his body in the river. Though sadly, without Batman in his life, the Joker slowly turns back to sanity. Of course, it's later revealed that the Dark Knight wasn't as dead as the Joker thought he was, and he returns. And this isn't actually a true death of Batman, but I did think it was worth mentioning because it's one of the more famous stories. And if you also haven't already read this, I do recommend it if you're a fan of the Joker, as it's one of the more interesting takes on his character, because we're always seeing him go more and more insane, and this is one of the few times where we see him turning sane which is a very different idea. And we also find out that the Joker's real name is Joseph Kerr, although his name is later revealed to be an extension of the word Joker, so it could just be an alias. I mean, it could still be his real name, we don't know for sure. But it is interesting to see him have a real name and to live a normal life, as he even falls in love with a girl who lives down the hall from him, and the two of them are going to get married. Though when Batman returns, the Joker does as well, and it all goes back to normal as he becomes a homicidal maniac once more. And that is every time that the Joker has killed Batman. Personally, I think the best one is the Emperor Joker murders, as they're just the most interesting and messed up deaths, so they're much more entertaining. But what was your personal favourite? And are there any other times that the Joker has killed Batman that you think were missed? Be sure to let us know in the comments. And I'd just like to say a quick thank you to those of you who made this video possible by donating to the Needle Mouse Productions page on Patreon. And as always, thanks for watching, and feel free to subscribe, share, like, and comment.